question, go to your phone right now, 247-8880. We're here with Ted's Gardens, and more specifically, Ryan Bates. Thanks for coming in. This Thanks is for having me a again. popular and fun segment to do. Yeah. But today we're talking about perennial color, and we certainly have lots of choices when it comes to talking about adding perennials to the landscape, as demonstrated by our table. Yeah, and this is just a small selection of, of the perennials that we have at the garden center. Uh, and you can add color. It doesn't matter if you're in the shade or if you're in the sun. Uh, there's all sorts of different things you can do to add color to the garden. Um, over here on this side, we've got quite a few different shade perennials. Uh, in the front corner there, we've got the uh, Tiarella. That's a really nice one for shade. It's got a nice little pinkish white flower. Uh, the foliage has a, uh, usually have, we'll, in, a little later, we'll have a green uh, outside edge and then the veins kind of turn kind of brownish or uh, not really brownish but more uh, bronze colored uh, so it gets a little color in the leaf too uh, then right behind that we have this little uh, cor coral bell here that's called that's called caramel coral bell and it's got kind of that caramely color just a really different color for the uh, part shade garden um, and then uh, right behind it we have a plant that's called ligularia it's got large purple leaves. This one's from Britt Marie Crawford. It gets a flower kind of like a daisy that's yellow. Oh. And these will take part shade to shade. Uh, the leaves can get uh, probably about 10 inches wide. Uh, so they get pretty large. Wow. And the plant will get about two by two. So that's a definite, a really nice one for the shade garden. Uh, then right in front of you, Amanda, here we have a uh, bleeding heart, which is probably one of, the, one of the older plants, perennial plants that you see in a lot of gardens. Real nice pink flowers. Uh, Those are gorgeous. It, it kind of will scare you a little bit because it'll disappear in the garden in the middle of summer. When it turns hot, it tends to die back to the ground. It still come back the next year, but it just uh, doesn't like that heat of the heat of the summer. Good spring color. Yeah, yep. right in front of that we have a columbine, uh, another kind of partially native plant here, and uh, it is a great plant for a shade to part sun. Uh, in front of that one, right down here on the bottom, we have a, a Japanese painted fern. This is actually a very low growing fern, it grows about two feet tall, or not two feet tall, 12 inches tall and about 12 inches wide. Has kind very of nice. silvery foliage with, uh, and the stems are purple. A uh, real nice plant to combine with the coral bells and the ligularia because it brings out that, that purple shade in the middle of the, of the fern. Okay, this is the shade, and I know That's you want to get to the yep, sun. We want to get to Nancy stuff. from Des Moines first oh, real quick because she's been great. waiting on the line. Nancy, what's your question? Uh, my question is, um, uh, on, uh, we're supposed to get this frost tonight. Can you cover your plants with uh, plastic or should you use blankets? I, I have like three rose gardens and lots of perennials. Yeah, I usually recommend using a sheet because it'll breathe. Uh, plastic, if you lay plastic down, wherever that plastic touches the plant, it will actually transfer the cold oh. right to the leaves. So you'll burn those leaves, whatever's touching the, the plastic. So it's best to use a sheet or something that breathes a little bit. All right. Nancy, thanks for the call. Yeah, you're basically just trying to keep the frost from landing on the foliage. Perfect. Okay, yeah. let's get to our sun plants before we go. Right here in front of me, we've got uh, two really nice ones. The one right here is Coreopsis, blooms with yellow flowers all summer. The one on my left is actually Painted Daisy. This is a really, really neat plant because it has that daisy-like flower, but it comes in multiple colors, anywhere from light Beautiful. pink to dark pink to red. Then right down here in the center, we've got a nice little iris. This is a variegated Japanese iris. Uh, shoots up with nice purple blooms in June. Uh, it right looks nice all summer long. Mm -hmm. it nice yeah, things. and it's got nice foliage. And right in front of it, we've got a, uh, a, uh, a spider wart, it's called. It's actually uh, related to, to, uh, to Moses in a cradle house plant. Gets purple flowers, nice yellow foliage, real neat plant. And then uh, we've got a salvia here, purple flowers in the summer all summer long. And then this guy over here on the right, which is, the, uh, which is a uh, sea thrift. Great plant for putting along sidewalks because it likes salt. So your winter oh, salt perfect. damage won't bother it at all. Love it. All right. Ryan Bates, thank you very much from Ted's Gardens. We appreciate it. And their information is right there on the screen, 981-1075. If you're called in and get through, they will answer it for you. Give them a jingle.